Well, good night everyone and welcome to another herping vlog in 2023. Uh, we're going to start this one off by doing something pretty cool. Well, first, first herp of the vlog is this little Cuban tree frog that's just sitting on this stick here. But we're going to start this herping vlog going doing a couple things. We're number one, actually officially going to start a python survey. We're going to do some python contracting, so hopefully we can see some Burmese pythons. And then we're going to go look for a native snake that I have never seen before, and it's really one that's been on my all-time lifer list of snakes to find. This is one I've been really looking forward to seeing. We're going to see if this works, if it is going to work. Um, we've gotten a lot of rain this weekend, so I'm hoping the rain's going to draw some snakes out. And yeah, we'll see. I'm out with Peter right now, who's starting the our survey, and we're going to get on the road here soon and see what we can find. We, it, we made it! We made it. Ooh, that butter. <laughs> Alright everyone, this is my lifer eastern coral snake, a snake that I've been wanting to see for at least a year now, if not more than that. This is absolutely incredible. We road cruised this coral snake, it was heading off the road, and Peter found it at first, and then we both saw it, and it's just incredible. Just incredible. We're going to try and get this guy to calm down a little bit and then get some better footage of him, but... I wanted to at least get a voucher of this eastern coral snake. Unbelievable. Words can't really describe it right now. Sayonara coral snake, go on and enjoy a nice healthy life and thank you for being patient with us. That made the night for me right there. <laughs> Disappearing. It is currently like after 1 a.m. and we were just going at a good clip and look what we found on the side of the road. This is a hatchling Burmese python, although it is very big for a hatchling Burmese python, I would yeah, say. Yeah, growing a lot. I know. How big do you think this snake is, Peter? Would you say two to three feet? Maybe yeah, a little more? somewhere in between two to three feet. He's definitely over two. I don't think he's quite a three yet. Okay. He's maybe two and a half, maybe a little bit more. Great, so this was obviously um, a big win for us and for Peter here. So we can get some extra money on this python survey and one less python in the environment. That's yeah. the most important thing, but what an absolutely, this is easily like the biggest hatchling that I've seen. Yeah, it's getting big. So, 
really cool. Maybe we'll see another python at one after one a.m. Sure. All right, so Peter is going to bag the python as he is now trying to so, yep, goes into the snake bag. Easy peasy. Tie up the snake bag. And a python has now been captured. Oh yeah. Okay everyone, it is now 2.30 in the morning and I have just gotten back with Peter from, I would say, a very eventful and memorable night of searching for pythons as well as getting the target snake of the night, which was an eastern coral snake, my lifer. And as I had mentioned earlier, that is a snake that I have been really wanting to see since I've lived in the Southeast since 2021. So for many reasons, and I'm not going to spend too much time going into as why, but just note that coral snakes are pretty awesome. And despite occurring pretty much statewide in Florida, with the exception of the Keys, they can be very hard to target. So I think we got incredibly lucky and... To get a python on the night too was pretty exciting. So I'm going to end the night here and pick up with the next herp that I find the next day. So y'all have a good night and I'll see you soon. Good morning, everyone. Today, I've decided to ride my bike into work and we have a beautiful morning here in the Everglades. So I got a pretty long bike ride today and hopefully my goal is to actually see some stuff crossing the road today. What I mean by stuff, I mean herps. So who knows, the ground's a little wet right now, but maybe we'll see a snake, a turtle, or something. Other than that, I'm just gonna enjoy a nice ride into work with some beautiful weather. So there is this huge alligator that's pretty much taking up the entire one lane of the road. Um, pretty much, um, I would say, an average thing to see here in Florida. And there goes an alligator. He's had enough and he's just walking on the side of the road like we're not even here. Just another day in the life of Florida. Oh look, he's, he was moving a little faster. And he's gonna go disappear into the woods. So we just came across this Florida red belly cooter on the side of the road. Get out of the shade there, but yeah, was, I believe this is a, it could be a, likely a female. 
that's just walking along the side of the road. We'll make sure she gets off safely, and who knows what else we'll see today. So right over here, that little brown tail is the outline of an Everglades racer, and as we get closer to it, it's just going to flee into the sawgrass. I just road cruise. This is a cottonmouth that was on the road, and he literally just shot right off of it. So that's pretty cool. So I did not grab this lubber grasshopper. It literally. I found it literally crawling on my arm, so um, you can go now, buddy. Let's put them back down. It's, these things are literally everywhere here in South Florida. I feel like the farther south you go, the more common they get. Come on, you can let go. There we go. All right, everyone, I just caught this cane toad. And we can tell it's a cane toad because on the back, it doesn't, the crests on the near the eyes, which are on southern toads, are more L-shaped. They're not on cane toads. And it usually, this one really doesn't have it, but they usually have like these white blotches on the back as well. Um, but these are an invasive species. They are incredibly, incredibly toxic. They're pretty much invincible because anything that eats them essentially dies from the bufotoxin. So they get much bigger than this. This is a pretty small one. So yeah, an invasive cane toad from South Florida. Let's get a little closer. There we go. All right, so right here over the sound of that revving engine, This is like a really skinny, malnourished cane toad, but they get much bigger than this. But yeah, here's an up-close look at one right here. So, we'll keep driving and see what else we can find. Alright, so we got a couple big cane toads over here. Here's one. Right there. And then we got this big one right over here. I mean, these are monster king toads, but they're definitely bigger than most of the southern toads that we see. So, there we go. Here is another king toad. So... Yep, in the United States, they are only found in South Florida, where we are right now, in Hawaii. Um, this, these toads, they come from South America, and the problem with cane toads is that they pretty much, if you try to eat them, you die. They are bufotoxins are just so strong that they make them pretty much invincible. So, we can see on the back here, these glands right here when stress will secrete this bufotoxin and that pretty much is lethal for anything that eats it. Okay everyone, this is going to be the last night of road cruising in this particular herping vlog. We're going to go out and do some road cruising in the Everglades and the last time that I was cruising in the Glades, 
was actually one of my best snake nights that I had in a while in that area um, in terms of the abundance of snakes that we found. Prior to that, things had been relatively slow, so I'm kind of curious. Is tonight going to be another good night, or are we going back to the way things have been recently? There's only one way to find out, and that requires me to get on the road and go look for some snakes. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see what we can find. All right, everyone, this might be the fastest I've gotten a snake on the road, or the earliest, or on this particular road. This is a baby Florida green water snake. It's actually... I'm pretty sure this is my first Florida green water snake in the month of August. So this is a little, looks like to be a little baby. We'll make sure that this snake gets off the road safely and we'll keep on going. But like I said, we've been cruising not even for five minutes and we already got our first snakes. So that's a pretty good sign. Well, it didn't take very long, but that is our first Florida cottonmouth on the night. It's a little one right here who's working his way along the side of the road. And I think he's like really indecisive as to what he wants to do, if he wants to go back on the road or off the road. But yeah, one thing's for sure, snakes are moving tonight more so they have been previously, so this is really exciting. Okay, so literally 100 feet up the road from that other cottonmouth is a larger second cottonmouth on the night. So we already have two Florida cottonmouths, three snakes total, and I haven't even been cruising for more than 30 minutes, so things are looking really good tonight. Beautiful cottonmouth. All right, we got our fourth snake of the night and our third Florida cottonmouth. What's been really interesting is that cottonmouths were super abundant in like March and April, and then they kind of dropped off a bit. I mean, we still see them all the time, but not as much as we were in the dry season. So yeah, a bunch of cottonmouths tonight. I think that's pretty cool. And we'll see what else we can get on the road. Well, I had to swerve out of the way, but I was able to avoid hitting them. This is cottonmouth number four on the night. Another fairly small cottonmouth. We're going to make sure this guy gets off the road safely. And then we're going to keep on going. But good to be seeing a lot of cottonmouths tonight. So you want to see what made me almost swerve off the road? Camera focus there for a second. Back up slightly, 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 ever so slightly. Where is it? Oh, right over there. The classic snake-shaped stick. So this is something pretty cool. This is the complete skeleton, or almost complete skeleton of a snake. No idea what the species is, but yeah, you can see the ribs there and everything, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so we got an angry cottonmouth here on the side of the road, and this is my fifth one of the night. Well, the cottonmouths are really moving tonight. Is this a cottonmouth? Nope, it's not a cottonmouth. I lied. This is a Florida banded water snake, our second species of Nerodia, and he's going to zoom right into the grass there. I thought, I was like, oh, that is a cottonmouth. I'm like, nope, just a banded water snake. And it was literally right up the road from where we saw the cottonmouth. So that's our, well, we're up to five cottonmouths. Five cottonmouths and two species of Nerodia, so seven snakes total, and we're only on one pass. Just look at that beautiful night sky. That's a nice crescent moon over there. Yeah, there is actually quite a bit of traffic for a Monday night in the Everglades, but we'll see what else we can get.
Okay, so we got some rain right now that's coming through. Honestly, out of nowhere, we have a snake on the road. There's a snake on the road that's crossing. I think it might be a corn snake right there. Wow, that's convenient timing. I'm gonna make sure this guy gets off the road safely and confirm the ID. All right, we got a corn snake on the road, as I had thought so earlier. Um, that was really good timing. Um, what I was trying to say is with the rain coming through the last time I went cruising here in the Everglades It drew a lot of snakes out onto the road because the storm was passing north You're okay, buddy So yeah, and just like last time as soon as the rain came we got a corn snake So here it is right here fourth snake of the nut species of the night and our eighth snake overall So a nice corn snake all right, we have another snake on the road. And it looks to be... Huh. It's a Nerodia. God, holy crap. Sorry about that. Light was... Zoom away here for a second. Okay, much better. All right, so we got a Nerodia on the road right here. I'm inclined to say that this is potentially a Clarkii. But I do think that this is either a Clarkii mixed in with a banded water snake. Um, so the Florida banded water snakes and the mangrove salt marsh snakes will often hybridize. So I think this might be a mix of both um, and not one or the other. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool find. And yeah, if it, I'm going to basically say that this is either a really cool looking banded water snake or... Potential hybrid with the Clarkii. It's our ninth snake on the night. So I think that's really cool. So that sound you hear calling over there, those are all eastern narrowmouth toads. They're just going to town tonight. That sound. All right, we got our 10th alive snake and our fifth alive species. Right here is a Florida scarlet snake. As I'm being now swarmed by bugs attracted to the light. So apologies for that. It looks like, you can see his head. You zoom in a little more. Kind of tucked underneath the leaf here. Let me get a better view. See his little shovel nose. He's tongue flicking. So, yeah, that's a pretty, I would say that's a fairly small scarlet snake. Wow, these dragonflies just love my headlamp. There's a better look at him there. So, yeah, pretty cool. Zoom out a little bit. So, yes, as I've said in previous videos, scarlet snakes are pretty common in South Florida. If you're out at night, you can see them just moving around like this. So, pretty cool. We'll keep walking and see what else we can find. But, there goes our first Scarlet of the night. So right here, this looks to be... I'm going to say that's a green... Oh god, the mosquito just bit my hand and it hurt. Zoom in. I'm pretty sure that's a green tree frog. It might be a squirrel tree frog as well. Um, I struggle sometimes to identify the two, but it's a native frog and not the Cuban tree frog, so I think that's always a good sight to see. So we are on our way back, and I'm pretty sure we've road cruised the same Nerodia. We found this guy earlier, and I think it's in the same spot. Um, yeah, I think this might be that one Nerodia where I'm unsure if it's uh, Clarkii or uh, Florida Bandit or a combination of the two. But yeah, we're getting him now later, so we'll make, just I guess, just leave him be. There's really no one on the road right now, and we'll keep on going, but there's a... Let's see if you zoom in a little more. There we go. All right, we got our sixth cottonmouth of the night, and this is without a doubt the smallest cottonmouth on the night. We can see the little yellow tip tail right there, indicating that is a young snake that is still relying on caudal luring 
for predate for predating. So yeah, this is the smallest cottonmouth of the night. It's a little after midnight right now, and get a better look from him on this side. So some of these younger cottonmouths they have this really stunning coloration. Um, this one maybe not the most profound, but still really cool. Overall, this is the second snake that we've seen on our second pass, and the first one we found um, was a snake we already saw earlier. So this brings our total, I think, to 11 alive snakes on the night, which is really cool. And who knows, maybe we'll see some more. And there's a cottonmouth working its way onto the road. So, all right, we'll keep going, see what else we can get. Looks like I got a hitchhiker, a grasshopper that is not a lover. So, see how long he stays on for. Well, it is almost one o'clock in the morning and we have our seventh cottonmouth of the night. Haven't had a big cottonmouth night like this in a while. And yeah, this is probably not the biggest one we saw tonight, but definitely not the smallest either. And he's just chilling on this wet road here at like almost 1 a.m. So I think that's pretty cool. And who knows, maybe we'll see another cottonmouth. 